Today, you're going to get two for the price of one. But first, I'd just like to talk a bit about the design flaws in the belt assemblies on the printer. Normally, when you have a belt, you try to match the pulleys so as the travel along the pulley is even. If you have a different size pulley, the V shape should be constant. If you've got the same size pulleys, like most of these type printers have, the belt needs to be parallel all the way along. Unfortunately, the design guys come back from a long lunch and they just put a number in what come into the head and you get a problem. Along with the Y-axis, you have your pulley here and you have your stepper motor pulley at the back. Exactly the same size. So you mount the belt and you apply your tension. Now if you know much about trig or triangles, the hypotenuse, the longest side. Unfortunately what they've done is that they've raised the clamp higher than the level, the parallel level of the belt. So what that means, that when the table is way over this side, the angle is lower. So the height is the same, say 10, so that's 300. You, you can work out the hypotenuse and the angle. But as it travels along, it is now higher. So maybe 10 and 20. The angle is a lot lower. So what does that mean? Well that means as you travel forward and back, the belt is getting a lot more tension and a lot less tension. A lot more tension, a lot less tension. When you try to screw it in underneath, you'd normally say have it in the middle, the least amount of tension. So when you're pushing it through, you're adding extra force on the belt for no particular reason. That's why the 3D Print 4A methods with the spring loading balances that out. A suggestion I strongly recommend is that you add one more plastic packer that come with the kit to actually lower the top part of the belt down so is it normally horizontal. I'll be making up another bracket a bit later, but that's what I wanted to talk to you about right now because it's the same effect on both of the belts. But this is easy to see here, and you would have seen the Y mods. You can do that as well. So that's the Y clamp. Now with the X clamp, it's just a screw. You pull the belt over the screw, get your cable ties and clamp it down. There's no adjustment. The position of where it's actually screwed in pulls it down. So it's horizontal, down, another angle, flat, and another angle up. So when it moves backwards and forwards, you're getting the same angle. Two for one today. I'll show you both of the 3D Print 4A mods that can make it easy and simple for you to do and overcome these problems. Now on the back here, I'll just be a bit fair and show you the back there. Now can you see the cable clamp? Is there? and it works well. I'll take it off to show it to you. It's just on the back of the linear bearing block. Quite simple to make, quite quick. Just made out of a L section angle, aluminium, 1.2, 1.5 millimeter thick. Cut 10, 11 mil on the legs, 30 mil wide. A four mil hole in the, uh, two holes in the middle for the screws. They've got a 18 millimeter center distance and they're three and a half mil up from this bottom lip. So. Get yourself a M4 tap, tap all the way through from the, the other side. So best to do it when you haven't assembled it, that you can even tap it while it's still on the machine. This is a simple little bracket. How it works? Quite ingeniously, of course. You have your belt. The belt goes up around one pulley and the other one comes around the other pulley. So they join. On the ANET method, you loop it around, make a hole, put your clip on, and that's it. Mine you don't. You line it up between the two pulleys, which I'll come to in a minute, and you just cut it to length so both belts butt up to each other like that. Then all you do is you've got an excess. I think in the manual is about 200 mil extra. On mine will be less because I've got the adjusters and all that. You just cut off another length, 30 mil long. The width of the block, the width of the clamp. Then all you do is that where you've got the two halves butting up, teeth up, you put the 30 mil 15 on one, teeth down. So then you can't pull that out. You put the other one on the other side and you can't pull that out. So what happens is that you got the teeth there. One's a belt, one's a little short, short section. So you got one half of the belt there, one half of the belt there. When that one tries to pull that way, it's getting pulled back by the other half of the belt. When that one tries to pull, that's being pulled back by there. And what this simple clamp does is it keeps them together like that. And it just has to have enough pressure, force on it, so as it can drag that along. And as you can see, it doesn't take much to move that. So you don't have to have clamps or screws on the top to belt into the uh, bite into the belt. It'll fit. So to fit it, 
your 52 cut lengths, put it on the top, put the clamp on, put your screws in, slightly nip up the screws, push the clamp down with your finger and tighten them up. Done. Simple. Very cheap to make, very easy and very light. You can maybe 3D print one, but don't forget, you've got a limited amount of gap there and the aluminium is quite strong. So that is part one, quite simple. So you don't have to do this next part, but I recommend you do. But that's a simple clamp. The next part is that you've watched the Y-belt tensioner and it's spring-loaded. I've used the bracket, the right-hand bracket, and with my rods, as you'll see in these photos, I've tapped them with a hammer, not with a, a tap. I've tapped them all the way in, and this photo will show a little curling of the plastic, but it sits hard up against the end there. Normally, they only go partly through to the tube, but I've managed to get the extra 4 or 5 mil all the way to the back. Do that separate. When it's not mounted on the machine, have that in one hand, have that on the other, start to push it in, and then use a plastic or a wooden block and just tap that in. So I've done that and you end up with a gap recess in there. So quite simply I made up this little bracket. It's 20 mil by I think it's 15 mil, 12 mil aluminium. Just some scrap that I got from the local aluminium scrap joint. I use it on a lot of my CNC projects building the machines. And basically all, all what I've done is cut out one side for these 33 millimeter and that's a gap in there. I've again used the nut certs. CNC 4A has got an immense library of videos. All the low videos have got up now well over 200. So there's different techniques and one shows you the nut certs. Watch that and be educated. What that allows you to do is to put threads in the thin material. There's only 1.2. That then, getting the right size, that's M4, that actually fits in there. Fits over the top and you line it up. And yeah, it's actually spring loaded. The two springs, they spring up and down. If you don't want it spring loaded, you can just adjust it with the screws there and that pushes against the rod. So it stops this bit from flying in and out keeps it secure so you can adjust your tension there probably got about 10 mil of movement the only thing that i did a bit different originally i was going to use two l sections screw in there goes partly across it is the eight mil thickness for the bearings and that's about 4.2 mil thick there so if you want to even though i've tapped both sides of the faces if you want the screw all the way through you'll have to slot this plastic housing that's what i was going to do then you could put it in but then i found out you have to get the screwdriver and try to line it up and you can't have it half screwed in half not and if you want the screw to go in that way there's not much clearance to have the nut on that side if you have thicker material doesn't it so this is the easiest solution i've come up with that works you put your bearings on there and I'll put this other spring back on put your bearing on there feed your belt through hook it around keep tension with the belt and then that will stop them there's just enough gap for one bearing to fall off and that will happen when it's inside it so just keep the belt on it as you drag it in and push it through now as you can see quite spring loaded so set and forget but like i mentioned in the other part when you come to cut the belt you can take the springs off put it on that easy with the belt tighten it all up but you can't clamp it because you then have to pull it out put the springs in put it back on and then clamp your belt it may be too difficult you know you might make that too tight and you cut your belt too tight so you can make your belt one or two teeth longer so it's got a bit slack and just make it easier for yourself because if the belt is stretched 10 mil and, it, and that's 10 mil in that direction so that half is stretched 10 mil and this half is stretched 10 mil so the belt's actually 20 mil longer you got a stuff belt <laughs> so just cut it easy fit it on then once it's fitted set and forget auto adjusts the x-axis auto adjusts the y-axis these mods overcome the limitations also with the clamp higher on top of the block rather than below it you're getting that parallel action of the belt rather than the angle as it gets to the ends so it's easy mods very cheap very effective and i highly recommend it so if you enjoyed this video tell your friends spread the word and subscribe if you didn't tell me why and as always thanks for watching